I remember some years ago, someone coming up to Rabbi Noach all the week after he'd given a shear and saying to him, thanks Rabbi, that was really inspirational. To which Rabbi Olawick replied, thank you. Rabbis need encouragement too. Baruch Hashem, I've been empowered by Hashem to make Torah videos for over five years now and I want to thank everyone for all their feedback and their encouragement. Some weeks the old creative juices seem to be running a little thin, like this week, which is why this video is so late. My apologies. And when someone leaves an encouraging word in the comments below the video or sometimes comes up to me and gives me a verbal pat on the back, it makes a big difference. There's a Gemarian Kedushan that says, when farmers do the mitzvah of bringing their first fruits, their Bikurim, up to Jerusalem, all the craftsmen, the workers, stand as they enter Yerushalayim and greet them and say to them, our brothers from such and such a place, welcome. And this they have to do even though they would be taking time out of their day and lose money by doing it. The Gemara says that the reason why they're obliged to give this welcome is if they don't treat those who are bringing their first fruits with such honor, maybe those people, those farmers, won't want to bring their first fruits next year. And so the sages instituted a special decree that those bringing first fruits should be greeted and treated with special honor. Now, this is difficult to understand. The bringing of the first fruits is a Torah mitzvah. Why would the mere lack of a reception committee and a red carpet deter the farmers from fulfilling their Torah obligations? The answer is yes. Failing to encourage someone when you have the opportunity to do so is like pouring water on the fire of his enthusiasm and it can lead someone to neglect even a Torah mitzvah. It says in Parshas Tzav, a permanent fire should remain a flame on the altar. It should not be extinguished. The Gemara in Zvachim, Daf Tzadi Aleph, learns that anyone who extinguishes a single coal from the fire on the altar has transgressed a negative Torah commandment. Now, if the extinguishing of a single physical coal is such a serious matter, surely one should never extinguish even one hope or aspiration on the altar of the heart. In the troubled times in which we live, let us reach out and encourage with words and love every aspiration and hope in the hearts of others.